everybody. Um, so before we jump in, I have to formally ask, uh, we, this is a public comment section of the evening, so if any of, any of you out there, meaning the two of you, uh, have anything to say that has, uh, in any regard, other than the two hearings that we have tonight, just raise your hand. Yeah. I just want to commend you all for putting your personal time in sometimes uh, in opposing circumstances and uh, serving on the board. Board recognizes your client. Please enter that in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we have two hearings tonight. The first up is scheduled for seven o'clock for a site plan review for the trustees of Smith College for the conversion of office to dormitory at 146 Elm Street, Northampton Map uh, 31B-242, was published on July 31 and August 7. Before we jump in, Rick, do you make a presentation? Yes. So, um, I just have to uh, put it out there that Rick and I have worked professionally for years and years. I don't think it's an issue uh, on this project. If anybody feels differently, just raise your hand and I can accuse myself. That not being the case. Uh, Rick, you're on. Uh, <clears throat> do you all know where this is? Have you been by? No, I'm from the President's house. Um, <clears throat> relatively simple. Uh, what we're proposing here is, and we've been before the Historic Commission also, is um, to Elm Street up here at the top, handicap ramp here off the porch, but because we're doing a handicap ramp, we have to do a sidewalk, which is why I'm here. Uh, we have to replace the front walk slightly, and then we're going to do a walk that's over to the driveway. The driveway will serve as a drop off. We also have an alternate in the contract for another handicap ramp off the back door. There's an existing driveway that comes around through here that's not being affected at all. Uh, and the planting that's out in front, um, as you all know, Smith is a botanic garden. I've been through with Michael and Jay to look at all the plants individually. We're going to pull out two plants only and prune the rest and actually add some more lily in the valley and some other plants that are there that we like um, that are already existing and try to keep the existing historic plants. And that's the extent of the project. And it's going from an admin to <coughs> housing? Yes, uh, it's going to be uh, seven rooms of the A Comstock dormitories, and in order to uh, not need parking for it, which is actually another question I have, uh, 47 Belmont Street over next to Ford Hall is coming offline, and so there's no plans to reuse that. And so that has eight dormitory rooms in it right now, and we're only planning to replace seven. So I'll probably come to you for a credit of one parking space <laughs> <laughs> at some point. So. And so that should, I mean, the only other question I think there was was how do we not need parking? Yeah. Um, probably file for a building permit right after the, uh, the period expires for the permit. Mm -hmm. So just so I can get that review it and keep it in mind, I pulled out my 2013 <coughs> parking law. Right. And so I'm thinking you're talking about the MCPA Belmont entry that has the 60 places and that's where you're pulling people from? No. Um, the other Belmont place listed on here is, um, didn't, ha didn't have any places. Um, that's the name of the lot. It's the one next to Ford Hall. I don't have my next to I'm sorry. Did it have it's behind Green Street. Street. Yeah, the yeah. MCA lot is a mending hall lot where the Smith Health Center just went. Right. And that's the lot with 60 spaces. Uh, the lot I'm talking about is if you're looking down Belmont, Fort Hall's on the left, to the left of that, so there's some spaces that were behind Green Street. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah. But what's happening to that property? <clears throat> the one that's coming offline? Yeah. Um, it's not going to be used. And that's really all I can say. That's so, that's, so that's why you can make the trade on that? That's correct. Until such a time it's going to be used. If it's going to be used again, which I highly doubt, um, we'll come back in front. The other thing, can you explain to this building was used for storage or administrative use, or do you know? Administrative use. It was uh, partial. Though. It's this is part of the overall master plan to get more housing on this side of Elm Street. Right. And they're just slowly but surely doing it. Right. But so they could also essentially use 47 Belmont for the same purposes that this house was being used for if they needed to and it would just be a zero sum game. I mean it's just a swap. So you know I just wanted somebody to know that we 
take the list and keep the list and look at the right. list. Right. <laughs> and actually, I mean, Carolyn and I have been going through the list rather carefully lately because we had the um, health center going online and we had the, the conference center that we needed some spaces for and Paradise Road and all of that. So um, uh, Cheryl, the uh, physical plan, has been uh, updating the list almost weekly at this point. We still have a net gain towards Smith, I think, of four or seven spaces left. Is there an updated log that we can get at some point? Yes, I'll, uh, we can easily get you one. But the, the actual dormitory spaces that are coming are coming from across town. I mean, are they, they're not coming from Belmont. Yes. Right now, there's eight rooms in that Belmont. Oh, okay. So it's actually, the, I mean, it's this, it's the, those spaces are coming here. That's correct. And then that building's not going to be used. That's correct. Okay. All right. I thought it was two different buildings. If you look next to Ford Hall, um, you can see that one of the buildings on Green Street was taken down recently, trying to create more green space next to Ford Hall is what we're essentially trying to do. No, I just get the feeling that we take these parking places and move mm -hmm. around. I know. And every now and then we, you know, I, I want I want to know that we're still working with the same ones we got. So is well, the rule with Smith or kind of what we're getting as long as there's zero sum gained with parking that we're okay with it, and it doesn't really matter where the new development is and where we're even though it's a half mile away or whatever it doesn't from the parking. Yeah, is that, is that? Do you want to take that or do you want to take um, yeah. just, just for it? Yeah. So the, so the, um, the idea, this, uh, this came about really from, uh, um, from the creation of the new engineering building, which is not that new anymore, I guess. Yeah. Ford Hall was a brand new building, you know, it was a, it was a, you know, it's a new direction for Smith to have different faculty and, and different focus. So, um, so part of that permit said, you know, we got to take stock of the entire campus parking, your traffic demand, where your faculty is parking, because there are different places that affect, that have um, exterior impact, you know, on the community in terms of parking. So that was sort of the beginning of analyzing, requiring the college to analyze where all those parking spaces are and really track what they're taking offline, what new spaces they're bringing on. Um, Is that when the, um Parking garage was built. Or was it parking garage was already built then, okay. and there was a surplus sort of determined based on the. So we have a parking requirement for camp classroom space and campus and things like that. But the garage then there were some surplus spaces that um, could be allocated towards this new building and new use on the Smith campus, which was Fort Hall. Um, so that was, um, and the idea was really to work with, um, make sure we have. Uh, a good working relationship with Smith in terms of looking at the overall impacts of cars coming to, to the campus but also spill over to the surrounding neighborhoods in downtown and see if we could uh, manage that better. So the point is now that anytime there's new parking created, the board will have to see if it's more than 10 spaces being created for Smith um, because we're, the goal, I think, for the campus as well as for the city is to um, not necessarily create increased demand for parking, but really um, decrease the demand for on-campus parking and figure out other ways that um, the campus can help staff and faculty and students get around. That's why our parking list also has zip cars and other shared transportation on the list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, my viewers crossed that uh, circulator last month and they called some the other bill that we're doing is to uh, being careful that if we're going to add new dormitory rooms, we would add new parking. If we're not adding rooms uh, and ID enrollment, then we don't necessarily need the parking. It's kind of. How many spaces are there? Um, there is. There's going to be a bike rack by the back. Which <laughs> if it's only 1522, we have a bigger surplus than I remember. <laughs> What's the, uh, how, I don't know if there's a ratio or a number, but how much of the uh, dormitory space is east of Elm and how much of it is west of Elm? Um, well, it's changing as we speak because right. Paradise Road Complex is coming out of right. the um, And that's what's going to start construction shortly. <clears throat> so with that coming online, the Freedman Complex will come off. 
And so that's 80 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need to tell <laughs> Okay. Surprise. <laughs> but there is a conservative idea that when, when the opportunity presents itself to bring more of it yes. across. Yes, that's the master plan. Residences we're talking. Correct. Right. Not administration or other things. No, but right. resident. Uh, people crossing. The, the, yes. Crossing yeah. Elm Street. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the board? Open up to the public. Questions are the public. Uh, motion to close. So move. Second. 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 All in favor? Okay. Uh, discussion. Seems pretty benign to me. Zero parking, two plants. And all the way back now. So, uh, I don't see any issue at all. Anybody else? No. Oh, I probably should ask this before we close it. Of that row of houses, dorms, how many are still admin or non residential? So it's like one. How many are with that? So I didn't need. So what are we doing? What are you talking about? Or is there a stretch of like from this green? Like four or five yeah. houses all the way yeah. down to John and Green. Well, once you cross over um, Cotton, uh, Paradise. 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 There are more administrative buildings. There are a couple of dorms and then right. the, mm -hmm. set, um, the student center. Right. And then an admin building. Right. Okay. So, but this side, yeah. um, I think they're all. This, this point is all residential. Yeah. And motion. I'm going to create a group of folks. Um, I move we approve the site plan review trustees to Smith College conversion of office to dormitory 136 Elm Street, Northampton map ID 31B242. Second. 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 Um, I should have mentioned this earlier, but <laughs> 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 there was a comment from DPW. Did you want to? Yeah, it was technically, I mean, the water connection. Right. So We're going to do that anyways. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. So the next thing on the agenda is um, a discussion. It's not a hearing. Uh, that's true, but it is a, a vote for the board. So this, um, this, um, do you have to do that? So um, this is the new assisted living facility next to Linda Manor that was approved a couple of years ago that's almost, is nearing completion. And as part of the approved plan, um, there were permit, there were permit conditions that required a planting along the um, eastern um, border with uh, residential property. North, southern border. Um, and, um, but there were also permit conditions about planting um, along the properties that go up Hayville Road and that kind of thing, but the, the real issue for some of you who are on the board may remember that the planting plan consisted of a, um, a, a sort of a separation from the road, this um, circular road, then a berm with trees planted to create a massing of um, vegetation and then um, another sort of separation before the actual property line. So I can remember slide 10 feet or something. So now the, um, just a few weeks ago, um, uh, plantings was begun and there was a discussion um, with the abutters and the um, project um, manager for the project, Diane um, Cook is here. Um, and, um, Louis has Rick and I went out to the site to look at sort of the different arrangement of plantings based on the site conditions, you know, post, um, essentially post construction. So this planting plan is a modification um, that would include the same 
um, number of plantings, the same species, but just not on the berm that was previously thrown. So the plan in front of you shows the difference um, where the berm was uh, uh, approved on this end and where the plantings would go to show sort of the same elevations or have gone as they continue to plant, you know, close out of this project. Um, I didn't feel like, as you, as you may know, um, there's sort of three different levels of modifications to plans. There's one that could strictly be an administrative approval where either the building department or our office um, approves sort of um, um, plan changes on, on the fly because they're not really substantive. Then there's a um, other sort of more of administrative view but by the board. Um, and then there's full-blown permit amendment. I didn't feel like this rose to the level of full-blown permit amendment because the plannings are all saying the same. It's just a little bit of a tweaking of where they're going. But I didn't feel like it was a staff administrative approval. So that's why I brought it here. It's been posted you know, on, the, um, on the agenda. The abutters know and they were part of the conversation and are in agreement for this to do it this way as opposed to the way that the board approved it. Why? So, um, well, if, uh, Brian can fill in more of the details of why. I think it's because of the site conditions, it, it would be um, a little bit odd to sort of have a slope um, down from the road, then uh, sort of a manufactured berm, and then down again. Um, and then the plantings themselves would actually be slightly higher than if they were planted on the berm that they originally so this gives a little bit more elevation to the plant. Mm -hmm. So the berm's eliminated in its entirety and the plant are just shipped up here. Right. And the landscape architect who designed the original um, plans was on site as well, looked at it, felt like they would, this is also um, beneficial for the plant. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be a detriment to the, to the plant or, yeah. or have any effect on the growing. So it's just the original design just to be a better thinking was that that would be a better barrier or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out this is equally good. Right. And there was no reason that this didn't come up earlier. It wasn't like this came up originally and someone had a reason not to. Right. Just to mm -hmm. get up. Okay, yeah. Well, the original purpose of the burn round to help some with sound, to, to help with screening, I mean, the berm served a purpose, so technically, why is it not doing that? And I'm, I'm not, I mean, if the abutters are in agreement, that was the whole point of the, to the buffer plan. Um, so if they are, I, I think that means the most to me, but I'm curious. Well, it seemed like sound and sight were the two things for the buffer, but if the plantings are higher, the sight would be improved for the abutters. And if they're closer to the building, the sound barrier do you want me to share the conversation we had with you? Um, yeah, that's fine. And um, Brian can also sort of provide his uh, feedback on that too. Um, I am not a direct abutter, but I am 20 feet away <laughs> across the Beerworks driveway. So we met um, the Beerworks and myself and my wife met with uh, David Payne, the landscape ar architect, one evening. Uh, and we're trying to understand, and, and it's always had the same question, like, well, and David, you know, he made a very good explanation that actually he thought, one, this would work better for the plants. You know, it is kind of strange to have this road, and then it goes down to, it, I mean, in some ways it would look very artificial. It would not look natural. It was like, well, why is this bump here? So, and his words, he said, it would look less Disney-like <laughs> if we didn't have the burn. And given where the road is and where the st there's a stone wall that's the property line, uh -huh. it just it would have been literally like two humps. It was very not very natural looking. And then he just felt also with the drainage and, and once especially once it's planted, um, it would allow more space for the plants that will grow back naturally along the stone wall and that are already there. It'll create even a thicker barrier because those will be there. And then you'll have growing up and then you'll have this this uh, this gradual incline and some of them actually will start right away being much higher than they would have been on the burn. And I think for the abutters, you know, our concern primarily was around the number of plants and the variety of plants that David had come up with to make sure that was not going to change. I mean, you know, this technically seemed to make sense. Um, 
And so I, I don't think anybody, uh, you, know, the, you know, those of us that were most directly there, you know, we felt like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, our concern was more about like, you know, are there still going to be the same number or the same variety? Because you know, they come up with a plan to make sure, you know, five years from now, it looks like it's been there for, you know, 100 years or 50 right. years or something like that. Yeah, I have a question. Between the two houses, it looks as if there's going to be a retention fund. Is that correct? Between the two houses, it looks as if, yeah. I mean, I was out there today, and it looks like a retention fund. That's right here. Yeah. yeah. And so my question is, oh. yeah, my question is, is any of the changes that are being made going to in any way alter the drainage into that retention pond? Because if it gets a lot more water in it, it's much more likely to be mosquito -y than if it can drain all the way out. So I, I just... And th that I mean, we we did ask about the you know the drainage and stuff along the edge, and David said it would not. And of not course, they're not the allowed. Drainage. It's not allowed to leave, and it should not affect the drainage plan that they already have. Okay, but I just did wonder about that. Yeah, no, he he indicated that he didn't think it would change the drainage plan at all. And they will have to provide um, as builds for the drainage to comply with the stormwater permit that was granted. So any changes in post construction conditions from what was approved would have to be reevaluated. Okay, well that's that was the one thing when I looked at it, aside from thinking it puts its arms around those houses in a way that right, we right. can't do anything about, right. so that's another story. That was the one thing I did wonder about was the drainage. I'm okay with the land here. I would say I'm kind of shocked by the white plastic I'm sorry it's plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we certainly have noticed that, but I think, it, it again, solid when the trees, I mean, when they start to grow a little bit, I mean, I think it will be a lot it less. It won't glow quite so much. Yeah, it won't, it won't stick out. And, you know, and even that, I mean, it's right on dirt. I mean, when they right. plant grass, and, and it'll just, you know, it'll look a lot more natural than it does right. now, I think, in a year or two. And we won't see it quite so much, <laughs> which is, of course, what we're worried about. <laughs> the, um, the retention pond remind me, though, this is I'm departing a minute just for my education, but the retention pond behind Atwood Drive has never drained. And so what 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 is our I mean, is Louie the one that keeps up with did it do what it was supposed to do? Uh, no, because that was a storm under a stormwater permit. Um, I don't know that it was supposed to, I mean it's the bottom of the floodplain. I think that it was I it's, thought we even had another pump in that storm. I thought there was yeah. another pump in that yeah. story. And it just frozen over in the winter and it's filled today and Well, I can right. certainly pass that on to DPW because there there's a stormwater permit for that project too. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. In other words, there should be follow up on this as well if it isn't so that there's a way of dealing with it. Yeah, yeah okay. Thanks. Um, for for projects that have uh, retention ponds, is there does the DPW take a lab every year or every other year just to check on things like that? Do you know how? Well, there's a requirement that you submit reports, annual reports, for uh, to show that you've been maintaining. Okay. There's also final inspections right before you know, there's a project. Um, maintaining but, it, kind of like you have such a project. Maintaining it is different than does it work correctly. You know, right. for, so the owner might maintain it, but the owner didn't design it. You know, consultant came in, designed it yeah. in conjunction with DPW. DPW signed off on it, but it doesn't. You know, it's supposed to be a hundred really year flood. You know, a fifty year flood. It's set up for that. And then you get a rain like we did yesterday, mm -hmm. and it's maybe that was a fifty year flood, but um, it doesn't work. And so yeah. the owner mows the sides and they weed and stuff like that, but but it doesn't work. And so what's the recourse? Um, what is it? What is the failure? Of? Holds water it doesn't drain. Oh, that's the drain. Right. Um, well, and the, but the real issue is if it's holding water, then it can't have the same capacity that it should have. So if another storm comes on the heels of that, there's already capacity right. taken up. So that's the problem. Then you get overflow, and then you get. Yeah, that's the problem. Also, you just keep mucky water in it, right. you get mosquitoes. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, this is, I, I didn't think about this from the flood, you know, handling them. It's just standing water all the time. Right. Yeah. But 
Well, that I think is something um, that, so no, so get back to this question then. So they, um, I don't think we have the resources to go and check each one of these annually to make sure they're functioning the way they were done. Um, I think though that when we know there's a problem, then we would go and do that. Right. It's the same with the building commissioner yeah, right. and the inspections office. If someone makes them aware of something, then we don't. Right. <coughs> Okay. Back to this item though. Any other questions or concerns about like this? And it seems it seems logical. And if the butters are agreeing. Um, <coughs> And, and let me just say why Brian's here. Um, there was a lot of contention when this project came on two years ago. Uh, yes. Uh, Lisa Witch, <laughs> like me, and my neighbors. Um, and um, there was a lot of anxiety about the project and the construction of it. And uh, except for one night, which they, uh, which I found out later, they were much choice. They were having to do concrete and they poured it and had to be done that night. It was late. It was a school night. Really, it's been. We live next door, and it, they've been very sensitive to the, They've not done things. They've done work on the weekends, but not late. And, you know, so I will um, just want to acknowledge that they that you really did manage it well. And um, even though we're gone most time during the week, on the weekends and stuff, I mean, we never had any complaints. We never, you know, they took care of stuff. And, uh, they've been very sensitive to the neighbors, as they said they would be. So we appreciate that. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. And it was a local fence company. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank they are earning their money doing that fence in the ground. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Right, thank, thank you. you. Good night. Yeah. Mm -hmm.